Today on the show, we're going to talk some Disney news, and we're also going to talk about the balance between adult fun and kid fun at Walt Disney World. That's coming up on Traveling with a Mouse. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 336. My name is Adam, and I am hosting this week, and I am joined by two distinguished gentlemen. Look at them sitting there. Have you guys seen that on TikTok? Anyway, first of all, we have John. Hello there. Obi-Wan and (laughs) Jason. Good afternoon, or I guess good morning, good evening, good night, or good night, whichever, whenever you're listening. Truman Show. (laughs) In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Was he a distinguished gentleman? <laughs> Is it because that now whenever you're on property, you're going to feel like you're being watched by Chapik? Yeah. yeah. Did I share on the show yet the random dream I had? I've, sure. I've heard that a lot lately. Random dreams. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. The, the dream I had, I was going into a meeting and Bob Chapik and Bob Iger show up. And I'm there mm. and I'm greeting them. And Bob Chapik is just standing there and... Mm-hmm. Sort of being his normal Dr. Evil self. And Bob Iger mm-hmm. is being very gregarious and shaking everyone's hand. Did they both push a button while you were there? Remember how they pushed a button and that rededicated the Magic Kingdom? No, like I thought that. you were going to say whenever they pushed a button, somebody's chair went backwards into the flames. <laughs> well, yeah, so well, they, they were both too. there. There, there, was no, there was no button involved. Um, oh, okay. They were both there. <laughs> Just checking. I remember that, you know, Bob Iger was being, you know, really friendly with everyone and shaking hands. And, and mm-hmm. Bob Chapek was just sort of standing there awkwardly. And Bob Iger walks up, shakes my hand and says, big fan of the show. I got a great <laughs> idea for you. Talk about the shortest security lines at Walt Disney World. There you go. And walks in. And I'm like, at the time in my dream, I'm like, great topic. And now I'm like, what kind of topic is that? So that should be the topic of today's show. The best tips <laughs> on to getting the shortest security lines. At I would say the walkway from Grand Floridian to Magic Kingdom if you're rope dropping. That's the short line. If you beat the boat people from the resort boat. I was going to say, yeah. if you're an annual pass holder, you go to that line. <laughs> really, it's the contemporary walkway, though, if you're early. Because you can always be early there. Oh, you mm. said security, though. But you have to stay at the contemporary, you know, to get there. But you know, of course you do. That's right. That's the only way to get there. Yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. Well, I mean, or like when we had breakfast at Polly, we uh, went through a security at the yeah. The monorail station. actually, if you're at a monorail resort, I mean, especially Polynesian Grand Floridian, yeah, that's usually nothing. Just go straight through and then get on the monorail and go to the Magic Kingdom, but. Well, I just want to point out that, at least in my dream, Bob Iger is a fan of the show, and he gave us a great idea. Oh. Um, Thanks, Bob, for listening. Uh, yeah. Chapek, however, it, was still not perceived favorably in my dream. Gee, dreams. I wonder why he wouldn't be a fan of our show. <laughs> I have no idea. He probably didn't know what our show was. I told him about the upsell possibilities, and he perked up. So, <laughs> Well, you should show. perk up because <laughs> you upsell every time you get there. Just That's about. true. That's true. I, every day I wake up, I'm not even at Disney World, and I buy GD Plus. I just do it just because <laughs> I want it so badly. Yeah. This leads into a good news story to start with, that nearly one-third of Disney World guests purchase GD Plus. Is what that do we really think about a that? good... Sounds pretty low to me, doesn't it? Yeah, that was, that was lower than I expected. I thought it would be at least like half, but... What was that? Especially, right? especially based on the way they were showing the numbers, right? Are they talking about just the Genie Plus pod or the individual lightning lanes? Does that count too? Genie That's Plus what is what they said. So they're not counting individual lightning lanes because those things get bought every single day. They, it's like hotcakes in some cases, depending on the attraction. Right. Thirty-three percent of guests. Yeah, which sounds good, like in the sense of oh, you know, not that many people are buying, but at the same time, that's thirty-three percent more revenue than they were getting <laughs> so that's still right a decent increase well disney stock actually took a hit a little bit you know uh, not not a huge hit by any means but a, you know a little bit of a hit after the report but because i think par- partially on the part that disney plus seems to be down right so. right yeah it kind of flattened off i saw that 
Uh, yeah, I, didn't I, gain as much as they expected. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to be honest. There's less on there that they they haven't really been appealing to me on some new stuff lately. So maybe there's some more people feel like I do. <laughs> I still have it, of course. Right. Typically around this time of the year, Mandalorian was going to premiere, right? I mean, that was the thing. And it's been delayed. True. And Book of Boba Fett doesn't come out until December 29th, I think. Right. But I mean, the and stuff then, they have come out with. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, Not like, exactly some of the been. big original series that usually are the big draws are delayed right now, so. I mean, The Muppets Haunted Mansion was good. I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, I like to hope that it, I would like to think that it did well. Yeah, it was not that long, though. It was very short, wasn't it? It's like an hour long. Yeah, but it's it was good. Right, I'm not saying that, but I don't know. My point is, like, Mandalorian was a huge draw initially for the first couple of years and now it's speaking of we have what one more year left now on our initial disney plus accounts that's right officially what's, starting tomorrow right yeah so what's going to happen are we going to renew next year <laughs> we're going to be upcharged i'm gonna think long and hard about it i'm not yeah. sure <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to start paying monthly all of a sudden that's gonna be weird <laughs> I'm sure there'll be an option to buy the annual or whatever. There'll probably be another option. Yeah, we'll be paying way more than we paid for the first three years, that's for sure. Yeah. I believe we paid, what, $140 for three years? Yeah, something like that. I believe it was, yeah. It was like Pretty three or four deal. bucks a month. Yeah, basically is what, it, yeah, like three fifty a month or four, maybe three ninety nine. Yeah. I forgot what it was, yeah. Equivalent. Yeah. Anyway. Well, here's another unrelated story, but this is one I found interesting. I don't think this is necessarily in, in indicative of anything, but there was another investor call with the CFO, mm-hmm. Christine McCarthy, making some comments about potential expansion to Galaxy's Edge. Of course, they mentioned Adventures Campus and Epcot, which are already some expansion that hasn't opened yet for both of those. But Galaxy's Edge was mentioned in the same breath as the other two so do we think that has any weight to it i mean anything where would you expand it well hollywood studios you got some room i don't think disneyland has much room for anything but but where yeah where do you even have it at hollywood studios where would you expand it expand it into that land next to it called toy story land we don't who needs that (laughs) no i'm just kidding Uh, no, but I think there's potential room. Like you could take out what's that street that they barely use anymore where the backside of Toy Story Mania is. You're talking about the Edna Mode Street, the yeah. Incredible Street? Right, which they barely even have anybody around there. you got a little room back there. You've got the whole Muppets area, which you could expand into by if you wanted to get rid of Muppets. So or, you're saying you're going to get rid of Muppets. So you're really, you're talking about... If you're rid of Muppets and Pizza Rizzo, what if they got rid of Baseline for this, Adam? No, they'll never get rid of Baseline. It's ridiculous. I would chain myself to the door (laughs) of Baseline. (laughs) Let's just say, you're talking about expansion. Let's just say they're going to make, they're going to take that area that consumes all the way up to Star Tours just to make Star Tours fit in, right? Yeah, so you could. I mean, they could do that. I'm just saying, I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying they could. They could also expand further backstage towards, you know, where the Star Cruiser is. I don't know. I don't. What are they going to, I mean, what would they expand it to? I mean, I guess they could. But But uh, expansion doesn't necessarily mean the land expanding. It could also mean additions to the land, like stuff that they had, like roaming droids were one thing that they were supposed to have. They're not going to add anything cool. Come on now. (laughs) Of course not. But I mean, droids are already supposed to be there. Right. I mean, there were things about what they're going to cut. Remember? Right. They didn't hit the right revenue targets. And so they were saying, how are they going to handle inflation? And they were like, oh, we might cut food portion sizes and we might raise some prices here and there. And of course, we're going to charge charge, more for stuff. Charge $9 for a spring roll at Magic Kingdom, you know, that kind of thing. How are they not making money yet? But let's remember the early talk of galaxy's edge there was supposed to be a sit-down restaurant which of course i think got moved to the star cruiser but there was the roaming droids there was supposed to be like banthas or something i don't know 
Okay, just so that everybody knows that, to be clear about that, when he says sit down, he means a table service restaurant. It's supposed to be. Sure. Okay, sorry. I got to use the Disney term. Yeah. Uh, table service. Well, service, I mean, because you right? technically sit down at all of the places you eat, right? Well, not all, not necessarily, but <laughs> if you can find a yeah. place. Sometimes you're leaning over a trash can, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, if there are stuff that they're going to add, it's not going to be anytime soon, so I'm not really well, worried just about saying. it. And, of course, they talked so much about the stuff you could do in the land and your reputation would follow you around of all the stuff, and that never really happened. But they keep hinting that the Star Cruiser is going to yeah, fill that. Yeah, I think you mentioned, void. you mentioned that before. Yeah. But I'm just saying maybe there's some actual expansion that's going to happen. I don't know. How about new missions on Smuggler's Run? Because I thought they had mentioned that in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, that could be a possibility. Wouldn't that be cool to have random, random like Star Tours style? Chewy mode will be an upcharge. <laughs> right. Unlock, yeah. unlock a new mode for five dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, because they already they already can do that. They already we already know they can do that with Star Tours. So why not mix things yeah. up? The only well, thing is, they'd have to change a lot of stuff as far as the pre-show and stuff goes too. Mm-hmm. So they'd have to make it kind of I don't know ambiguous i guess they couldn't make it specific very specific in mission in the pre-show anymore that to change mm. something i don't think i mean you could still be going after coaxium just be on a different going to a different planet or something i don't know well the the one thing that they already do change of course is the difference between daylight and nighttime that's about it yeah they could do more speaking of expansion though if you've ridden the epcot uh, to uh, ridden the Epcot, ridden the monorail, the <laughs> ridden the monorail to Epcot lately. Are you You've on noticed Facebook? in the giant construction pit that is the center of what used to be Future World is what's it called now? World Celebration or something? What's it called? Anyway, I forgot. I think I still some, call it Future World. Yeah. So, the, <laughs> well, the old Communicore area. <laughs> right. I'm gonna call it Communicore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anyway, the the future journey of water area looks like it's starting to take shape as far as construction. So yeah, that looks maybe cool. we'll have the journey of water soon. Yeah, I want to go on the journey of water. Sure, I guess you walk through the journey of water. So I don't know how that. I don't know. We don't have enough journeys over at Epcot. We have journey into imagination, and when they have, we're gonna have journey of water. Do you walk through a sewer at some point and go? Down and get yeah. to the car. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are there. <laughs> yeah, maybe they do. And yeah, you you walk down like a sewer and you end up in the World Showcase Lagoon <laughs> at some point. That's where the I journey of water at Epcot goes. Doesn't it all drain into the World Showcase Lagoon? I was gonna say they already have the journey of water. The water goes into World Showcase. It goes out the arms or whatever you want to call it, right, right. there for the harmonious. That would be a fun back ride in, to go back down. <laughs> Yeah, through there. <laughs> That's the journey of water. Yeah. I think they need to get people in uh, World Showcase to drink a bit more water. Got to hydrate. Yeah. yeah. That's what the, that's what they really got those arms for. They're going to spray it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So we, I, I read somebody on a, with a comment, because we've been talking about how Disney keeps trying to come up with new ways to increase revenue, because apparently they don't have enough yet. When does Chapek go nuclear and just sell alcohol in Magic Kingdom? Uh, That's an instant raise revenue a lot, but make a lot of people mad thing. I think that's they're slowly doing that with the restaurants offering it. Maybe that would be the next step, I think, is like Pecos Bills. You can get beer and wine and then Cosmic Rays and all that eventually. And then I don't I, I, I don't think they should. Right, I really don't. No, but, but they, that I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, would you be you, surprised? They, I wouldn't be surprised because they do it, and the next day their revenues spike. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Magic Kingdom needs it personally. I kind of, I mean, it was okay doing the whole table service thing just because they had select like wines and stuff and like that. But it's in a weird way. This doesn't feel right at Magic Kingdom. I can't explain it. Oh, it's <laughs> well, because it's, it's never kids. been there. Yeah, it just it just doesn't feel right, I guess. Although I gotta say, you know, Skipper Canteen, it's kind of nice to have be able to have a sip while you're yeah while I'm there. sitting at a table service. But I don't know, it just feel weird to be like, hey guys, let's do a drink and get on Small World. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have something themed to themed to Small World. <laughs> I think there's more creative ways to enjoy Small World. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm not. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say, do you have any tricks for Small World, like the goat trick? It's gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit of a, a, a <laughs> PTSD <goat> <laughs> moment the next time I get on Small World. Is all I'm gonna say because the last time I was on it, I was there for like an hour and a half. So. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's al- and that's almost enough for therapy. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you were stuck in that final room, it definitely would have been bad. But speaking of Smart World, do you guys see that story about Disneyland's has been flooded? Yeah. They were updating What's it for the about? holiday overlay and refilling the trough. I guess something broke and leaked, and now they've ruined some of the... That's why they got to do it the way they do in uh, Disney World, where it's just a big room of water. Yeah. <laughs> the trough is kind of silly. Yeah. Well, I guess it's always been that way, so this... If it ain't, I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, it was the original. Yeah. Well, as far as theme parks go. Sure. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But, and water is a little scarce in California, so they can't afford to flood the room. Yeah. No, um, no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, but hopefully they'll get it fixed. But, it, you know, there's no, no opening date. They just say they're working around the clock to try and fix it. But there's no... Some of that stuff to fix that, to do something like that would be a um, pretty big project. I mean, it must be. I mean, because the Peter Pan out there, you would think that they would change it to be continuous like it is in Florida, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of Magic Kingdom and things coming back there, as we were talking about the Main Street vehicles. Welcome back. They've been spotted. Are they back every day officially? I, I just saw the one day that they were back. Is it? I think they've been knows? seen on more than one day now. Okay. Yeah. Cool, I don't cool. know if it's officially back, but the omnibus was uh, seen. Mm-hmm. I've seen the fire truck. I gotta say, the omnibus is my favorite because our first run that was our unicorn was the omnibus. So it's well, just, uh, just it's cool. interesting to me that the omnibus is out because pre-COVID you like never saw that. That's true. <laughs> it's just too big to get through the crowds. I guess maybe the crowds are lighter because of. You know, I guess they're still limiting to some extent, or maybe it's just I was, lighter. I was about to say that's probably the only reason they brought it out at all was maybe they had a light day or something, or I had a light moment, and they're like, "Hey, let's yeah. whip the vehicles out." <laughs> it's a light day. Is let's that what they do? Out. You don't need Genie Plus for the vehicles, and if the omnibus is running, yeah. I might just sit on it and ride it for several however, loops. However long? <laughs> How is that yeah. not an individual lightning lane? The omnibus, I'd pay right. for that, right? Would you pay eleven dollars to ride the omnibus? Yes, I would because it would if for a challenge day. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. I would pay to make sure I got a spot on the right. Main Street vehicle. If you could pay like, like at four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon to get it or something. He's like, I'm here to redeem my lightning lane. Whip it out. Right. Just <laughs> open the gate. Let's get it out. Come on. I'll pay you eleven dollars right now to ride it. Uh. <laughs> Hmm. Don't tell Doctor Evil, but that's actually an interesting idea. Of you better hope he doesn't listen. To I this think show. there is a, a population of about thirty people that would pay for that, and that's all <laughs> challenge runners. So, but they right. should leave that as an option. <laughs> they should leave that as an option, though. It's like, hey, you want us to pull it out of the back? We'll we'll uh, pay for it, and we'll do a loop around the main street. You might get them to bring a vehicle out for a lot more than eleven dollars. I mean, if you're, yeah, <laughs> you're just trying I mean, to bribe the cast member. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I was on a VIP tour, I should be able to say, "Bring the vehicle out for me." Ooh, you know what? Mm. That's actually a really good idea. Hmm. That's next. If you go on one again, just be actually, like, hey, can we uh, ride in the right whichever vehicle of your choice? Well, yeah, I'm about to say if you're paying as much as they're charging right now, you should be able to say, "I want you to drive the omnibus from park to park." <laughs> <laughs> that's I wanna, what I want to go in. I want That's what I want our tour. I want our VIP tour to be in the omnibus. Exactly. I want to drive all the way down. Well, drive. Of, <laughs> speaking of the omnibuses, since you brought it up, yeah, I had seen one of those classic uh, footage of Epcot and everything. You know, of course, back then you could you had enough space on in World Showcase to drive buses because it wasn't near as crowded on on it. But it was neat seeing those double decker buses all, all riding around there all the time. I remember back when they yeah. used to be prominent. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing them. I guess the paths are, what, too narrow for the crowds that show up today, I guess? Is that... Well, the the paths are actually pretty wide overall, but, like, it's the people. It's just too many people. Well, can you imagine a bus going through Mexico right now? (laughs) Oh, yeah. That would be (laughs) like, yeah. (laughs) You couldn't move. 
That'll be an authentic experience of a bus going through actual Mexico. That would be very authentic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they know how to cut it close. That's true. Yeah. Well, now the thing is, is if this isn't regular with the omnibus, if it's occasional, that's just going to throw even more wrenches into a challenge day because you kind of have to find out, did they run the vehicles today or not? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, as it stands right now, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal because the odds of you actually completing it aren't too great anyway. But um, with the, as long as park hopping is after two. But, yeah, I, I find it hard to believe somebody's going to come down. At, at the way things are right now, I'd find it hard to believe somebody's going to come down and the one thing they missed was the Main Street vehicle. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Well, you know, they can run the omnibus, but you still have to walk from the parking lot. Trams are still... It's another week, still no trams. Still no trams. No parking lot trams. Yeah, we know that. Maybe the omnibus can go service parking lot tram duty. Yeah. I also wanted to mention, I know I'm jumping all over the place with the news, but I just... I didn't find a whole lot that I found exciting this week. But the full list of the narrators for the Candlelight Processional yeah. yeah, have been announced. No Neil Patrick Harris this year. <gasps> is it even what? a Candlelight Processional? No. Neil Patrick Harris is not here. But Moana is going to be doing it. What's her name? Ali Cravello? What's her name? Crava- Cravello? I can't remember how <laughs> Yeah, I I get. I know who you're talking the about. The voice I, of yeah, Moana. I, She's yeah, doing it. Uh, some of the usuals: Cheetah Rivera, Pat Sajak, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Lisa Ling, Jody Benson. But a new one that I hadn't remembered before is Andy Garcia. That's kind of a big name for Candlelight Processional. Um, I haven't seen his name before. Have you? Have you guys remember? I don't remember him being I don't recall it, but I don't recall everybody that's ever done it. There's only a few names that I remember. So, I don't, maybe, I don't know. But, yeah, Andy Garcia is doing it. Anna Gasteyer, who used to be on Saturday Night Live back in the 90s and early 2000s. It's kind of an odd selection. Yeah, interesting. Courtney B. Vance, who, uh, gosh, what, what show is he on? The Law & Order SVU, I think he was on. Anyway. Blair Underwood's doing it. But no, Neil Patrick Harris, so kind of sad about that. I want to hear, uh, what's his name? The guy that played Jesse Pinkman on Breaking Bad. I want to hear him do a candlelight processional. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, and I, I think I mentioned it before, but if you're at La Cava, order Neil Patrick Harris's margarita. What was it? Yeah, I mean, it's his drink that he came up with. His drink. Do you just call it, do you just call it a Neil Patrick Harris? Like, Give no, me a it has Harris. a name, but it's on the menu, of course. So just look it up. Uh, I mean, when you're standing in line, you'll see the menu. Give, or maybe it's just abbreviated. Give me an NPH. <laughs> but it was delicious. Anyway, wh- any, what do you guys have, news story-wise? Anything that was Well, you know, earlier when you said exciting. the 33% of guests doing the Genie Plus, yeah. right? Yep, yep, I yep. saw this article that said per guest spending at Walt Disney World increases by 30%. Yeah. So related mm. is that the thirty <laughs> percent? <laughs> I, I imagine <laughs> is that what people added was lightning lanes or added yeah. was Genie Plus? I don't know. I mean, I would guess. I did see that forty percent of the Disneyland Magic Key sales are all new pass holders. Forty percent—that's pretty high, don't you think? Wasn't it a hundred percent because they got rid of all the old ones? <laughs> no, no, no. It says I know yeah, these mean. are four. 40% are brand new. I know, I, know. So. I know what you meant. Yeah. I was just like trying to be one. funny because they changed the name. Yeah. So aren't they all new? I got you. I got you. <laughs> but you mean they've never been pass holders before or they weren't? Or or, or it's been a long time. One of the right, two. Right, before, yeah. Like they weren't prior to this. Yeah. Mm, that does surprise that me because I figured everybody who was one would have just re- re-bought it, bought it again. Of course, there was that rumor about Disney revoking annual passes due to merchandise resellers. What just happened? There? It sounded like you spit at the resellers or something. <laughs> was, you were like, you were oh, like, yeah. you were trying to say, oh, I was okay, like, sorry. No, I was like, at that whole first thing. First of all, ah. I'm not a reseller. I don't know why you guys think I I buy 
buy a merch and resell it. I I've sold like three things. No, 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 no. I have not accused you of reselling <laughs> merch. I have accused you of yeah. of trying to trying to sell stolen merch. Um, stolen merch. I've really never sold anything. Stolen, stolen stolen items like uh like forks like sporks. I okay, first of all, I don't have a spork. I don't know where you get that. I've never had a spork. It was an ongoing joke from way back in the day. But anyway. I know, I know. I never had a spork. Never had a spork? Never even used one? Nope. I've actually never even seen one of the Galaxy's Edge sporks in real life. <gasps> oh, uh, how about true story. how about that fully vaccinated cast member is no longer required to wear a mask indoors backstage starting... Well, it's already started. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, it's already started. <laughs> you want to talk about the Star Cruiser? Yeah, about being sold out for three months, yeah, or booked out. I mean, is that a shock? The first three months, I'm not surprised by that. Let's talk the the next six months. You know, how, three months. How, three months. That's just Star Wars, like absolute, like mega, like mm-hmm. they dress up every day, and <laughs> you know, and what I mean? the vloggers who have enough money to yeah. book that, or the people who, yeah. you know, are paying. For other people to go so that they can review it and whatever, yeah, you know. that's yeah, yeah, that's what that is. The first three months worth, but I mean, yeah, we know that the super fans are gonna right. do this no matter what. They've probably had something reserved for this for ever since it was announced. They've but been who, saving some money for this. Who can afford to do this every six months or every month? Or I got a feeling you know. it's gonna do better than you think. But I don't know if it, it's not going to be sold out, obviously. But I mean, it's going to do better than you think. Yeah, let's put it that way. I feel like they would they would want to try and encourage people to book this and add on, you know, Disney World, right? Because this is a three night or three day, two, not even three night, two night. Yeah. three yeah, two night three day experience. Like that's not. Don't you want to keep people there? At some point, they're going to be offering bundles or packages to book both, wouldn't you think? I don't know. It's kind of like land and space. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a, land, a land and space package. package, sure. Back in the day, they really did do genuine land and sea packages. Pretty much now, you're just adding it yourself. You're just putting two things together. <laughs> yeah. they, don't have, they don't have actual packages anymore. Or if you have a travel agent like our friend Jill Dilbeck at gmail.com, you can have someone else do it for you. That's right. You probably still can get a package of sorts, I guess. They could probably put it together. Exactly. Yeah. So Have a travel agent do it for you, and you won't have to go through all the hassle. And it won't cost you any more. This will have already happened by the time... We release this episode, yep, but as, at the time we're recording, mm-hmm. yep. this hasn't happened yet. Uh-huh. On November the twelfth, which is yeah. the Friday that will have just happened when the episode comes out. Yep, yep, yep. There was Disney Plus Damn. Day, and they're going to allow Disney Plus subscribers to go in the parks thirty minutes early. Mm-hmm. Right? Isn't that um, everybody? <laughs> Yeah, and so because the resort guests already get 30 minutes early, they're going to let them go even 30 minutes earlier. So now resort guests will be 60 minutes earlier. So I'm wondering if there's going to be a day where they're just going to really stack this up. It's going to be like D23, Disney Plus, Disney DVD, box uh, shipping member, I don't know. Like how 30 minutes extra for all the different subscriptions. I don't know. I tell you what, if I was paying the kind of money you pay to be Club 33, I would have, want to have my uh, own entrance to the park and have uh, as early as I wanted. <laughs> to see Probably do. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um, there was another uh, news story I saw recently, um, and I kind of want to confirm this because this was from a few days ago, but they've been updating the park hours for the holidays. And Epcot's no longer open till midnight on New Year's Eve. See, I, th- I thought weird. that was a typo or something because I saw it come back and it was back. Is it not there now? Is it back? I, it was it was gone for like, I don't know, not very long. And then it went back to, I think it was a screw up on the website, I, from, honestly. That's the last I heard of it. I, I mean, I didn't dig back into it after that. But the last I heard, Let's I thought it was look. a screw up. A screw yeah. up on the website? I'm shocked. Yeah, maybe it's something they're gonna do eventually. Cause yeah, it says twelve. Yeah, twelve a.m. 
Yeah, okay, it was so a for a little while they went down to 10 yeah. p.m. Which is yeah. nuts I think it that was, they would do that. Yeah, New it was Year's just Eve. an error. It was an error. Magic and Kingdom the, was also open to midnight, so. Yeah. And Hollywood Studios. Epcot's the obvious for New Year's Eve, in my opinion. <laughs> Why can't you stay at Animal Kingdom until midnight on New Year's Eve? I want to do that. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> Disturbs the animal. <laughs> of course. On a positive note about Animal Kingdom, Tam Tam Drummer's back. Excited about that. Okay, and, that's good. And Harambe. Uh, some live entertainment has returned. Cool. Sweet. And, and, and Primeval World was totally gone. Yeah, it's completely <gasps> demolished. What? Wait a yep. minute. I was just hoping it was a really big refurb. <laughs> In a and way, it is. It. <laughs> it is just gone. It's it's gone. Do it's we gone. really think anything's going to come back there, though, any time in the next five years? The Galaxy's Edge expansion. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> That'll be it, yeah. Sure. Like, you have to transport to the next <laughs> galaxy. That's where the Skyliner station is going to be, from Coronado to where Primeval World is. Yeah, <laughs> Dino Land. No, what's what would literally go there? What what would go there? Like they're unless they redo the entire Dino Land, what's going to go there? Nothing. The Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Yeah, that would be funny. Like, yeah, <laughs> Dino Land. It fits perfectly in Dino Land. <laughs> right next to Dinosaur. <laughs> right. And right in front of Triceratops Spin, because you can't get rid of that one. That would okay. be the good dinosaur. Something good, the good dinosaur. Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, it was that such a huge hit. Yeah, great hit there. Just like Dinosaur was. <laughs> so they changed the name there. They changed the name there to be named after that movie, and then like include it in just the pre-show. Was it? <laughs> what? Well, like like one clip? I don't, I don't know. Anyway. Disney needs to buy the rights to Jurassic Park so that they can get Velocicoaster over there. Yeah, yeah, they could just like <laughs> move it from Universal. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I got to thinking about this the other day, and I don't know if it's ever come up before. But you know how they had the, the river ride, uh, that, or they have the river ride still, the Jurassic River Ride over at Universal Studios, right? Jurassic Park River Ride. River Adventure is what it's called. But then you have Dinosaur, and I'm trying to think about the timing of when that park was built, and it was it opened in like 99 right and animal kingdom opened in 98 and they just so happens to have an attraction called countdown to extinction at the time that involves dinosaurs and it actually has near the end uh what do they call him it's it's supposed to be similar to a t-rex but they don't actually call it a t-rex that kind of almost gets you yeah that almost gets you before you go out and that's the exact same picture at the drop on the river adventure (laughs) Is the T Rex comes out from the shadows? Mm, yeah, that's true. Like, Isn't that true. I had to think him back to the whole Michael Eisner and him trying to copy things or trying to like one up them by getting stuff done sooner. And he was right. still there in that time period. I was like, I wonder if that was actually a comparison there. <laughs> I'd never thought of it before, but I really feel like that's what they did. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it is very similar, right? It's yeah. a much smaller drop. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, much smaller. But very yeah, similar. You know. Similar re- thing as to how style. what happens. Yeah, right, to what exactly. happens with the dinosaur, the animatronic, more or less. Right, comes out at you. Yeah. Right. I just never thought of it before. I mean, I'm sure someone has before now, but anyway, I just thought, yeah. Since we since we were in it. Very good point. So I have one. Yeah. Story. Okay. The Disney Very Merriest After Hours is has mm-hmm. come, yeah, and it's the early yep. reviews are. It's good. It's worth the gigantic price tag. Touring plan says yes. When From I, what I've seen, there's a lot more stuff. Oh, okay. okay. In comparison to Halloween, the Boo Bash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, there is a full stage show that nice. features Clarabelle. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got it's got the three caballeros. That's, uh, okay, let's say you weren't selling it with Clarabelle, but okay, keep going. We got three caballeros. You know, it's got the fake snow. It's got an actual full parade. It has special fireworks. There's like enough special stuff Mm -hmm. to make it feel like a party. Now, $250 at the night before Christmas is kind of crazy. But right now you can get it for under $200. Let's say the night before Christmas. It's like the five days before Christmas. Yeah, like five days before Christmas. Yeah. I think the parade's twice. I think there's one fireworks. There's a dance party. There's special food. Some character sightings, 
special photo passes, some cookies, you know. I think the snickerdoodles were included in the massive price. But if it wasn't the 250 price and I was going sometime soon, I might consider it. I was going to say with the 250, which would you pay? 250 for the party or say Steakhouse 71? <laughs> Or well, that's, California the Steakhouse Grill. 71 is, is cheaper. <laughs> California Grill is cheaper. Yeah. yeah, they'd be cheaper than that. That's what I'm saying. Which 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 are, if you're going to spend in that price range, which do you which do you think is a, oh, a better California Grill. better <laughs> overall experience? I mean, California Grill is not 250 a person. That's I mean, what yeah, what would be 250 a well, person? We're talking like uh, Victorian we're talking, Alberts. We're talking Victorian no. Alberts at that point. Okay, I get, I think my thinking was like spending overall. Yeah, because it'd be for my family of three, it's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I'm looking the, at a thousand bucks to go. Right, which is insanity. And I actually fed four adults and three kids for about two forty ish. I think it was at California Grill back in the spring. So yeah, wow. Yeah, it, it, I mean a thousand bucks. I don't think it'd be worth that. But maybe at the one of the lower priced. Like if I was there like this week, maybe I'd consider it. Yeah. Speaking of Christmassy stuff, did you guys see that there's a new boarding group that you have to get if you want to meet Santa? You have to do a boarding group. The Santa boarding group? <laughs> For Disney Springs. There's a... Ooh. If you want to meet Santa starting November 12th, boarding group starts at, at 7 9 a.m. <laughs> right. oh. Exactly. It says the queue starts at 9 a.m. and there's another one at 4 p.m. Yeah, if you want to meet Santa, you got to get a boarding group. I can't believe Santa's in the pocket of Big Disney now yeah. with uh, boarding groups. You, he, I feel like Santa shouldn't have sold out like that. <laughs> Can I buy a lightning lane to see Santa? That's what I was about to say. Yeah, they should have lightning lane availability for Santa. <laughs> I saw that they also had diversity uh, Santas, like different... Races? Right, Santa that you could meet. I don't know... Again, if you can choose, I'm I'm not sure. I guess it hasn't started yet, so officially. At, so I'm curious. At Disney Springs? So is it Disney Springs? Yeah, I think there's a Disney Springs. Okay. It would kind of ruin the illusion of, you know, Santa, you know, being one Santa all over the, you know, world in the night if you're still buying into that, but... <laughs> Oh, you mean if they have more than one Santa sitting out there? Like if they have like yeah, four Santas like sitting in the yeah. plaza and you're like, which Santa would you like? That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Be, uh, well, Santa's magical, so I guess you could just say Santa can You multiply be, himself these days. <laughs> right. Well, do they have like bad Santa you could meet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton out there? I want to meet bad Santa. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. Any other news we should cover before we get to our topic? I think that wraps up the news segment. There's not a lot there other than yeah. the usual. That okay. you, you can't charge think of anything more. else. Yeah. So go now because it's going to cost more. And just like everything else. In yeah. Do it right quickly. Now, right. Everything. Inflation. Inflation is up. So speaking of going though, I did want to mention I've talked to a few folks lately and. The topic has come up about how do adults enjoy Disney? I thought it was just for kids. Like, you know, we're three adults last time I checked. And, um, yeah. that's, that's, well, that's a kids at heart. Loose term. <laughs> Age-wise, we're definitely adults. Put it that way. We're old now. and <laughs> But I think we do a really good job of balancing kid fun with adult fun. You know, the kids need to ride a ride. Okay, we'll we'll do a ride. But after that, we're going to, you know, this well, and <laughs> whatever. Yeah, you know. I definitely approach it differently when it's just me or just adults. <laughs> oh, of course. Some of the rides that we consider kid rides, I would ride by myself, believe it or not. But Like which one? What would you say? Well, I mean, like I would do something like I would do Peter Pan. I mean, I would do that. By yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Carousel? Carousel. I don't know about that one, though. Small one. do the carousel. Well, I mean, if you're... World, really. If we're doing a challenge, obviously, we've done all those. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's some things that I obviously just wouldn't wait in line for, too. That I wouldn't wait in line for Mine Train, for instance. Yeah. Well, do you want to take it by park and say, like, Magic Kingdom is probably the hardest one to do the balancing of... 
Yeah, Kids so a, if you're at Magic Kingdom, that's the one where we typically have some of the hardest days. Because I think that's where we've had the most meltdowns is Magic Kingdom. Kid meltdown. really? And adult meltdowns. And adult meltdowns. Well, that's true, yeah. You're right. And the challenge with Magic Kingdom is that the key to a good adult kid day is the balance of the good food, the good drinks yeah. versus the rides. And Magic Kingdom doesn't have food or drink. Yeah, like, very little. I'm not saying they need little. to have drinks. I'm saying they need food. That's other other than the, the the only thing that gets us excited at Magic Kingdom from a food perspective is Skipper spring Canteen roll. and the and the spring rolls. Spring rolls, yeah, Skipper Canteen. Dole Whip, sort of. I mean, it depends. Like, I like the swirl, the Dole Whip swirls. Harbor House is still a good choice, too, right? It's, it's a good choice, but not, it's it's basically Captain settling. D's. You know what I'm saying? You know. Uh, I don't I don't go that far. I mean, I like Captain D's all right, but it's not. But it, essentially, it's everything is fried. It's just fried chicken, fish, gotcha. shrimp. Yeah, I get yeah, I, I'll It's give all you fried. That. Everything's fried. You get a basket of fried stuff. And it's fine, but, you know, you get that just about anywhere. It's not like, hey, I'm going to go have a good day as an adult, and I'm going to go eat a basket of fried right. fish. <laughs> right. Right. It's just, we're here. That's the best of the options that are here. Right. So, the key to a Magic Kingdom day and having a good balance is don't spend all day at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. There's three really great resorts really close by, even four if you count Wilderness Lodge. Five, if you want to go even further, and and when say like Hoopty Doo is open, you know that was always a fun thing for me. But mm-hmm. it's a lot of block of time you gotta give it. But that one can be fun for family, but I think it's more fun if the family is a little older. I don't think the yeah. younger, I mean, the younger kids can get into some ex- aspects of it, but I think it makes more sense to if the if the kids are a little yeah, bit especially older, especially if you want to participate, right? Yeah, you know, if you want to be, yeah part of the end show but anyway uh, the resorts like you can walk to contemporary and have like there's good food there there's great food at poly right. there's really good food at grand floridian as well and good options that are close by cool resorts to explore so that's a good place for a break but at magic kingdom that you know i i think i remember jason your wife saying about certain rides that we did on my birthday this year that I was just like, you know what? I want to ride the ferry boat. And yeah. um, that's a good adult. Take a break for 15 to 18 minutes riding around on the ferry boat. <laughs> Stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know. Town Sawyer Island actually is actually a good break as well. And the kids yeah, can the, have fun. The there. kids are running around. <laughs> right. But you can kind of chill up there. You know there can't... They can't leave the island unless there's swim somewhere, <laughs> which I guess so could happen. So our most <laughs> recent visit to Magic Kingdom, I believe it was our most recent. Yeah. Uh, we balanced it by going to the Polynesian afterwards, right after the fireworks, and we went to the Tiki Bar, the outdoor version. And Because yep. uh, kids aren't kids allowed in there. inside. Kids aren't allowed in. Yeah, our kids sat out there. They ate some food. They sat on their tablets honestly while we had a drink or two and then we went to the the poly beach area and they ran around for a little bit and that was a nice balance that was how we had fun we didn't just uh only do the rides and and then quit exactly yeah yeah what would you consider more i I know you mentioned the uh, riverboat Mm -hmm. what would you consider more like the adult-esque I guess, rides at, at Magic Kingdom. Would you consider them more slow rides like that that would be really the adult ones, like People Mover, for instance? Yeah, People Mover would be another good one, I was going to say. Carousel of Progress is a good adult one, especially if you're old, older. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just, sorry. What are you trying to say? <laughs> well, if you if you're, remember if you're a, it, like... You if know. you're a senior citizen, this is your ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you remember it fondly from when you were younger, obviously... <laughs> Which is like forty years ago at this point, but yeah, you know, if you remember it, like I, I am, I have fond memories of Carousel of Progress. I don't desire to go do it, but it's still, you know, it's still enjoyable to to watch it and sit through it. And if you need a break, that's a good one. But okay. anyway, yeah, I would say Big Thunder is a is one that is yeah good space, for most pretty people. Obvious. Yeah, space, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Those the key are, that we're saying here is typically it's. 
how do I still have fun even when my kids are with me? Mm-hmm. Um, Pirates, see, of course, is yeah. great. Jungle Cruise, well, all those are great. A lot of times we end up with our Magic Kingdom trips recently, though, I'll really just kind of let the kids sort of lead in a way. I mean, I'm just fine with them. I'm just along for the ride, pretty much. I mean, I just go, I mean, I just make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't do that. But. We don't let our kids lead because they make poor decisions. Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> Um, we'll be, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll walk in and we'll be like, what do you want to do? And they'll be like, I want to go on space mountain. Well, that's a four hour wait. Okay. Uh, all right. We're on space mountain. What do you want to go do next? I want to go to pirates. Okay. We're at pirates. What do you want to do? I want to go to, I want to go to small world. (laughs) They'll just like, I don't mean like go that way. Right. But typically though, what we've done is say, oh, we're going to go to people mover and again, we make it. Like the kids all love everything, so there's not anything I can think of that they. Well, see, mine are still in the age range where they don't know where everything is necessarily, or they yeah. don't know. I mean, but so I mean, I, I mean, Maddie is just about to be six. Our kids definitely don't know where anything is. We'll walk in the Magic Kingdom. Oh my gosh, like, we want to ride Test Track today. Are you kidding? Our wives <laughs> don't know where anything is. Are you kidding me? If you send them off, like, why don't you go take the kids to Test Track? Like, well, where's Test Track? Well, at least my wife would say that. Yeah. I got you. I got like, you. Yeah, well, go no, where no, the loud mind. sound is every 30 <laughs> seconds. Just okay, head that way. Uh, it's a good thing she doesn't listen. Uh, <laughs> right. No, she would admit to it either. She's like, I don't know where anything is. I just follow where yeah. you guys go. Well, I have a good sense of direction anyway, but my wife right. really doesn't. Not so much. So I can't yeah. get her to go do stuff like that and whenever we're waiting on one other thing either. Or else I, watch our we, I would say we rarely get that opportunity, Jason and I. I don't think we did get it very often. Yeah. Now, well, let's move on from Magic Kingdom because yeah, the rest Epcot. of the parks are easy. Uh, Epcot to talk is about probably it. the easiest, right? I mean. Yeah, but I would say let's go to, uh, let's go to Animal Kingdom because yeah. Epcot Hollywood Studios is the key. But Animal Kingdom is a park that oh, you yeah. can definitely... Totally. balance fun with the kids and fun for the adults because it's spread Very out immersive you can yeah you can go from a ride and then say we're taking a break and we're gonna go eat at satuli we're gonna stop by the food the, there's food carts that are good yeah. in asia and africa there's several good walk-up bars yep there's Especially walking the tours. like you can get like africa. you can get a drink and do like the walking jungle trail and be like mm-hmm. now the yeah. kids are having fun while you're having fun Exactly, yep. yeah. Yeah, there's so much. Animal Kingdom is, I feel like, the park that we still need to explore more of because there's just so much more we can do there that we haven't done yet. The two walking trails are yeah. very interesting, actually. Have parks yeah. in them. Both yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. S- somewhat interactive. I mean, I don't you know, in and areas. Two of the most highly themed areas of any park I've ever been in. They're just off the charts immersive, especially Asia. I would say in uh, yes, Animal Kingdom, incredible. Yeah. I could walk around there for the whole day just looking the around at stuff. Maharaja Jungle Trek there, and I think they actually renamed the Pangani to just Gorilla Exploration, if I'm not mistaken, because that was the highlight of the of that tour was the gorillas. Right, right. Yeah. I had a good balance where our wives took the kids to go ride. Flight of Passage, and they all had a great time. And Adam and I sat with your youngest, and we just mobile ordered uh, beers. Oh man, from yeah, it's so uh, totally. Oh man, and I, I mean, that's probably the best quick service still on property because if we're at Animal Kingdom, we're eating at Satuli no matter what. I mean, it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. I like where there's no questions. It's not yeah. like where we're are we going. eating. It's like when are we going to Satuli? Right. Even if we just ate and we got there, we're at least gonna get the grog or something and and, and sit out there for a few minutes because well, it's eat, such. My a wife day. eats two entrees at Satuli. <laughs> yes. So that one's that one's easy, hmm. and it's also like if you're gonna look for a sit down, I would leave the park and go down to either Boma or Sanaa if you're trying to get that balance. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, get that balance between kids and adults. But the, the the trick is to not just go whole hog on all adult stuff or all kids stuff. You you balance it in with like a ride or the dig site, you know, playground yeah, area yeah, play. or and they have fun. But the holy grail of how to have fun as an adult with kids at Disney is 
the Skyliner, yeah. Epcot, <laughs> and Hollywood <laughs> Studios. Seems, yeah. That is the holy grail of fun for the whole family because <laughs> the kids love being on the Skyliner. Oh, yeah. yeah. And every stop yeah. on the Skyliner has great oh, possibilities man. for the adults. Yes. Bar Riva, oh, at well, Riviera, Banana Cabana. Banana Cabana yeah. At Caribbean Beach, even the Joffrey's cart. If you were you know, yeah. needing caffeine, that's yes. perfect, right? I the mean, Joffrey's at a Caribbean Beach. Good stop, and then Epcot is just the haven oh, for. I'm gonna walk around and eat good food. Yep. And there's still just enough stuff for the kids. I mean, now especially that you have like two, three rides actually: Frozen. Grand Fiesta mm-hmm. Tour, Frozen. Uh, Ratatouille. I, I kind of forgot Frozen because we haven't done it in a while. Well, we have shows. Yeah. I mean, you can you can plan a great day. And between along that, that the keeps way, everybody entertained. Like I know our kids love Mitsukoshi, so and mm-hmm. that's like its own attraction. So that's kind of on the way. Oh, and it is. So the, yeah, the, yeah. So my son uh, <laughs> spends of the times he swiped his green light card, it's almost always at Mitsukoshi. Yeah. Mine too. My son looks forward to that shop. What do they get every there? Time. Uh, usually something Pokemon themed. Yeah, I used my, my my okay. to buy cards there every time. Pokemon cards, or you know, lately it's just something related to that. Okay. And while they're in there at Mitsukoshi, Adam and I well, usually Adam, I drag him along to the line, <laughs> frozen uh, cure. to go get get a frozen cure <laughs> yeah. if he's not already in line for a frushi. Uh, at the Japan. Oh Park. man, yeah. The, I love the, anything at the Japan festivals. I'm getting in, and of course the quick service at Japan. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a popular one with it's us a, too. It's, it's a, a really good one. I think it you used know, to be like our go to until Regal Eagle opened, and now that's kind of like our go to. That's true. Quick oh, service. and speaking of Regal Eagle, there's your next stop along the way of adult fun. Get that Tennessee lemonade. Yeah. Oh man, that's a good one. Well, yeah, so the, talk- the kids have so much fun there too. Go ahead. Yeah, when you when you were talking about Mitsukoshi, what I was going to say there is the atmosphere inside Mitsukoshi. I don't know if it's like the music or whatever. That's actually pretty relaxing to me in a way. I know I don't normally call a shop relaxing, yeah. but I mean that shop itself is kind of a relaxing atmosphere mm-hmm. as, far and if as, you ex- as far as shops go. Yeah, and if you explore the koi pond area, that's just a gorgeous yeah. spot in uh, any World Showcase uh, pavilion. Yeah. So. Yeah, Japan but is anyway, one of yeah. the best. And, yeah. and then you hop the Skyliner. We talked about the two stops. And you have Hollywood Studios. Yeah. We've mentioned so many times how to balance Hollywood Studios. Oh, it is yeah. about making sure you get Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for the kids. Yep. You get in some good Toy Story Land, and you are at the rope on Baseline. Yep. If you are on the rope <laughs> at Baseline at 1030 a.m. in the morning, you're going to yep. have a good, balanced day. Yep. And, and you're you're gonna have you're gonna have fun. You're gonna be like, I love Disney World. I love Disney yeah. World. <laughs> and if you're lucky enough to score a uh, an Oga's Cantina, get the beer because that's the best bang for the buck there. The uh, mm-hmm. cocktails. I mean, if you've never done them, we've mentioned this before. Try try one or two to start with, but they're they're watered down. They're sweet. They're they're not the ba- the best cocktails you'll get. But the beers, they're quite good. At, uh, By the way, you, you um, mentioned Oga's Cantina. We didn't mention this in the news. Did you see that they were selling the uh, Rancor Tooth thing on Shop Disney? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they have the Rancor to- Tooth flight set right now on ShopDisney.com for $84.99. But you don't get wow. the beer with them, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You just get the, you just get the so flight set. Isn't that more than what you pay at Oga's? I think it's the same price. Okay. Well, if it's, I thought it was like 79 But even if it's the same price, you're charging shipping and you don't get the beer in it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so you just get some Rancor teeth. That's it? Oh, gosh. Yep. That's silly. They also are selling some of, some of the other mugs, if you will, from Oga's Cantina. Oh, you like know, the, for the other specialty drinks. Stuff, yeah. Which, again, Ogres is fun. My son loves Ogres. He wants to go back because he loves the soundtrack. So I think Bright Suns is his favorite song, if you know that one. And, of course, DJ Rex is fun. And, you know, when the bar, the power shuts down and they have to figure out how to, you know, hit the something with the hammer to get it to turn back on. That's, you know, stuff like that's fun. Um, it's a fun atmosphere. I was thinking about this as we were talking about it. Which pavilion... 
at Epcot is the best for a good adult Mixture. and kid just in that pavilion. And mm. I feel like it's got to be between Mexico yeah. and France. That's, my, that's the first one I thought of. Mexico, France. I would say Japan is not far off. It doesn't have an attraction, but the store... At least for our kids, uh, yeah. it's a big draw. Okay, so, so that's in the final three. I know yeah. we mentioned America Pavilion, but really the kids just eat with us there. Right. So I would say for me as an adult, UK, but the kids, there's not really anything there that they love. I mean, UK well, is like a quick well, stop he said for the us. Mix. Yeah, we don't linger there. Like I said, you said the mix, and for me, it's got to be Mexico. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is now that they've added Ratatouille to France. Yeah. And the crepes. I, there's just not a like a good bar. Like, there's not a place I love. Well, there's to a place drink you can at. get wine. There, there is, but I, th- I think yeah. Mexico's got to win because you go into La the Cava. and you've got La Cava <laughs> and you got Grand Fiesta. Tour and the theming and is fantastic inside. It, yeah. it, and my son likes to always buy the breakable stuff that's not for kids in the Mexico food. And that's where he, another place he likes to swipe his card is he wants the those, breakable uh, stuff. The skulls that they're selling, oh, yeah, the yeah, painted okay. the painted skulls that break, right, right, you know, because right. they're made out of glass. He's and, right. or what, not glass. He buys but, those? You know. Yes, he's oh, bought wow. like three of those. Oh wow, I, well, <laughs> I haven't noticed. I I would throw in that you have a very underrated quick service just outside the pavilion as well. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Oh, yeah, I'd say <laughs> that quick service is good. Um, I'd say it's underrated. That was what I'm getting at because it's underrated, not terrible. I, I, I would put it below uh, Regal Eagle and the Japan one, but it is pretty good. Yeah, even the festival booth for Mexico is always good too. I would say gen- in general. The reason on. we don't ever go is though that one has always got a long line because Typically. people go to Mexico and they're like, I want to get. A margarita. A margarita. <laughs> and so they they'll they'll be in the either that that line or they'll be in the you know oh. the main margarita booth line. Um, you mean the outdoor the, one? Yeah, but they should go into the pavilion. And and yeah, the pavilion is fantastically themed. The, the the pyramid, I should say. Oh yeah, yeah. I like that the fountain area now is dedicated for drinking from <laughs> La Cava because it kind of helps spread the people out a little bit because La Cava is very tiny inside. I've never actually been able to get a spot in La Cava as many times as we've been there. But now that the fountain area outside is dedicated for drinking your La Cava drink, I, I like that. Yeah. Spot. La Cava's great. Yeah, it's um, one of the best. So, I mean, I think the key is is if you go and you're like, I'm going with my kids and I've got to extract every single value out of this because it's a oh, a trip of a lifetime, and I'm just going to ride all the rides, you're probably going to leave with some angry kids because you're pushing them too hard. Yep. You're going to leave tired, and you're going to yep. be like, I don't understand why adults come here. Yep. Give it that balance. The one other thing we haven't mentioned that is great for balancing kid and adult time, take a break, go back to your hotel, yeah. go to the pool for a couple pool, hours. Pool. Yeah. Have, a re- have a resort with a good pool. Yeah, that's true. Yep. There's tons of them. Even off property, there's good ones. That was kind of our uh, a little bit of a disappointment in our most recent trip. We did start a day off at Pop Century at the Hippy Dippy Pool, and it was fine, but yeah, it well, kind of lost its luster quickly with everybody because there's just very yeah no fine. slide for the kids to to enjoy mm-hmm. no. I don't know, theming, the bar wasn't open, yeah. you know, stuff like that, yeah. I mean, the bar's not open, the the theming, there's not a whole lot of elements for them to play with. There's just, like, a couple of things shooting water in. And the water yeah. was cold, too. I feel like the other pools were heated better. I don't know. The water was cold. I was going to say, last November, when we stayed at Caribbean, some of, one of my favorite moments of the entire trip was the evening that we spent at the pool area there and the mm-hmm. splash pad. That was my favorite, some of my most relaxing believe it or not time spent (laughs) was there even just having fun with the kids there it was just so stress-free yeah to old key west uh, the pool isn't the best there but we had a great day a pool day at old key west it wasn't again the best pool on property but the kids loved it there was a slide that my son was addicted to and afterwards we did the surrey bike rental and 
had a had a blast yeah. doing that. I mean, that I, if you're staying on property, I think it's worth it. Yeah. You know, if you are not going to go often, to at least get a moderate hotel so you can get at least a that slide or something. Yeah, a little something. Yeah, agreed. Because I mean, Coronado Springs has a fantastic pool, and it's just a moderate. I think yep. it's fantastic. And you've got it has a, a great lot of slide. options for food and drink nearby. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Agreed. It's the, the My Ducks, right? And, of course, the yeah. Magic Kingdom resorts are amazing for food and drink and proximity to stuff. So, you can't go wrong with the Magic Kingdom resorts. Yeah, it's one of those things, though, where you feel the pressure if the park's open and you're like, oh, I'm missing out on park time. Yeah. But you just have to let that leave your mind, embrace the vacation atmosphere. This is where it's like we do all these weekend trips, and I I would love to find a time to do it. You know, I know it's going to be hard to talk our wives into it because we go so often. To get like a full week yeah, okay. where you can just sort of... But you know, by day three or four, they'll probably be over it. But that's when I'll finally be settling into my groove. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to the day when our kids are older, old enough to where we just send them off to the parks and we hang out at the resort. <laughs> well, the ma- majority of the trips that I've taken have been four nights at least, sometimes five. Majority of them. Yeah, I feel like we often are doing two or three nights. I feel like even four nights, uh, you feel a little pressure. I, I, I remember that one time we went with our other friends, and it was like a seven-night trip. Wasn't that right, Adam? That was when we first stayed at Grand Destino. No, oh, yeah, it was six, six or seven nights, yeah. It was a long, that was yes. the longest, yeah. It was a very yeah, long was trip. Good. I mean, I feel like a lot of folks were, but we had like a full day at the pool there. Yep. Uh, yep. You didn't go to the pool. You actually, see, that's another thing. When you go with more people, you can also spread it out up. because we let yeah. you and your wife take your youngest and have yep. just some alone time with him. And we yep. kept your oldest with us at the pool all day. Yep. Yeah. We had uh, our youngest did his first haircut on Main Street at the Harmony Barbershop. It was fun. Good experience. There was one time that I did a seven night trip and we actually did one park per day, believe it or not, but there was one off property park included. It was SeaWorld was included. And also a water park was included as one day too. Uh, Typhoon Lagoon was included one day. That would be fun. But yeah, again, just to sum up, I think it's important to balance that. It can't be all about the kids and it can't be all about you. It has to be a mix of the two to kind of have some harmony. You yeah. know, it, the the hard part nowadays is when you spend, especially if you're spending a hundred plus, which you have to do, right? $110, mm-hmm. $120 a day per person. to go to a park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. you kind of feel like you want to get your money's worth out of the park and yeah. you're probably going to end up miserable trying to accomplish that in some cases. It, well, the thing is, is people think to get their money's worth, it means riding attractions, right? Yeah. Getting There's as much done. There's a lot more to a park. That's that's oh, the thing that I've learned going so much is yeah. when I first went it was like I want to ride everything but there is but that's that's coming yeah. from a, a world where I went to amusement parks not theme parks yeah right like the what else is there to do at Six Flags other than ride ride rides mm-hmm. like there's right, nothing right, else right. at a Six Flags uh, and set set reasonable goals I would say is yeah. the best thing to do. Like, what do you want to do most ride-wise here? Okay, let's make sure we got that worked in. Right. Just put and that on the genie. It'll, 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 no, it'll no, make sure even. you get it fit in. <laughs> don't even. I, but, I'm curious. You know, they had an update here recently. Have we heard if that changed anything as far as the what the genie tells you to do? I haven't heard anybody do mm-hmm. it since. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I don't think people have tried it out. The only thing I've noticed about the update was that it was like, lightning fast compared to what it was prior to the update they uh, as far as yeah they, they get man, maneuvering through the app was like really fast compared to what it was so i know that was different but it made me curious is like what else changed all right well we've we've reached our allotted time so i think we should yeah button it up there but um any other closing thoughts really quick don't put too much pressure on yourself if you go yeah <laughs> I would say the if you're the weekend type like we are, I would say 
Like this last trip we did, it was to ride Ratatouille and do Space 220, and we accomplished both of those did goals. That. Yeah. So I felt like we we accomplished what we came there for. So yeah, we accomplished everything we were trying to do and more. Uh, it yeah. was a great. That was a great trip. Yeah, I I consider that a really good one, one of the best of the year probably. But it's like you know, if there's something new or something different we haven't done in a while. Yeah, that's kind of stuff we focus on. Like, yeah, I want to do that this time. Let's do that. And I would know. say a good rule of thumb: pick three attractions when you go to a park that you say these are the ones I absolutely want to do. And then treat everything else like a bonus, and I mean you're ha- you're going to have fun. Yeah, I mean that's the way I would say it. And don't push for ride after ride after ride. Take the time in between to go get snacks, go go yeah. hang out at a lounge. Huh. You know, take some time. Bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> I mean, lots of those. But <laughs> but you know, it can be fun. All right. So where can people find us, John? Where in in the world wide web? Well, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. That is all at TWTM Podcast. We have a Spreadshirt store in which you can buy your exclusive, or our exclusive, TWTM merchandise. That is shop.spreadshirt.com slash TWTM Podcast. And we have a YouTube channel as well, which you can find the links to that where, Adam? On our website, which is travelingwiththemouse.com. And you can email us podcast at travelingwiththemouse.com. And if you want to help or have help booking a trip, Jill Dillbeck at gmail.com. She can help you book your travels. So, for John and Jason, the distinguished gentlemen, this has been Traveling with the Mouse, and we will see you on our next trip. A lot of times we end up with our Magic Kingdom trips recently, though, I'll really just kind of let the kids sort of lead in a way. I mean, I'm just fine with it. I'm just along for the ride, pretty much. I mean, I just go, I mean, I just make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't do that. We don't let our kids lead because they make poor decisions. That's um, true. <laughs> um, <laughs>